for this one, I've already started a new layer. I've already hid my cylinder, so my sphere and my cylinder are still there. We'll come back to those later. Um, but now we're going to do probably one of the trickier shapes, which is the cube, okay? So to do this, we're going to have to do a lot of duplicating of layers. So I'm going to change my color again. Um, I'm going to kind of do it a green color. All right, so this is kind of my main color here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to my shape tool. And I'm just going to make the best kind of square that I can. All right. So now when we go to do this, um, we are going to use lines a lot. So um, I'm going to go back to that line tool and I am going to make sure that I'm going to actually make my lines black so that I can see where the lines are. So I go here to line tool and I want to make sure, I'll zoom in here, I want to make sure that when I draw my line to start, I am going to draw one, it's going to be touching that corner. Okay, so I've lined up this cursor here, and I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. It doesn't matter where you start. Okay, oops, that should have been black. Let's change that. There we go. Okay. Now, don't worry about it looking too pixely and things like that. We'll fix all of that. So I'm going to move this just a little bit. Okay, so it should be touching. If there is an empty space, you have a problem. So I need to duplicate this two more times to make sure that I have my perfect cube. So to do that, I'm just going to right click, click, duplicate layer, drag it over here so I know that it's even with that guideline and it locks in place there. I'm going to duplicate one more time for here. And then I drag down this way and it's in place there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and merge all four of these layers together so that I hold down shift, click the first shape, hold down shift and click the last one you want to merge and right click or control click merge layers. Now this is all one shape. Okay, now we only have one more line to make. So for this, I'm going to start by lining it up like that. And that pink guideline is going to help you tell you where things are at in line. Okay. So now I'm just going to, um, we have one more line to make here. So I'm going to purposefully, I'm going to merge this first with this last shape. Okay. Now, so all of these are together except for this one area here. So let's say I go to draw my last line and I don't quite make it all the way to the corner. Okay. So I need, I'll need to change these to a dark side, a light side and a medium side. So let's say this top part is going to be my lightest side of my cube because that's where the light is coming from. So I'm going to find kind of a mintish green. So I go take my bucket tool all of, well, first I got to merge this layer together. Okay, so I've merged that layer. I go to fill it in, and it looks like it's touching just enough. I didn't want it to do that. Let's do it again. So I'm going to move this line tool over just a little bit so there's more of a gap. So now let me merge those together. Okay, watch what happens when I go to fill it in. It fills out the entire area because there's a gap right here. You don't want that to happen, so you've got to make sure that those are touching your line. So I'm going to move this line back. Oops, books. Got to make sure that that, okay, there we go. Have to unmerge that so you can't get too far. So now I have to merge it back together. Merge layers. Now when I go to fill it in, it should work just fine. Okay, then this is going to be over here, actually is going to be this main color here. And then this part of my cube, it's going to be the darkest color of green because that's the one that's furthest away from the light. Oops, but 
I should have done that first because there's a little bit of a gap there. So we'll just make this one a little bit lighter. All right. So now you should have three distinct different colors that you're working with. So now you can work section by section again, but you will have to do some blending together. So same thing that we did with our brush tool before, you will want to come in and add some areas that are a little bit lighter. This one's going to have the least amount. So I'm going to come in, I'm actually going to add in a little white up here. And I'm going to go ahead and just select this front here. And I'm going to shift, shift, click with that magic wand to select everything. And then use that mixer brush tool to kind of help make some of that square look more like a cube shape. Okay, so there is going to have to be some blending together with this, and you'll have to go over that quite a few times um, to kind of get the look that you want, but make sure to just look back at the examples, okay? So now you're going to continue to add a little bit of shadowing and shading to all three of these sides. I'm going to make this green a little bit darker here because there's going to be some shadow, so I'm going to click that. So you're working a lot, a lot with color with this one and how to use that tool. And really, a lot of you guys said that you want to learn how to make things look realistic. And this is the best way to do that, okay? Um, if we're making digital drawings, if you cannot shade on the computer with the mixer brush tool, things are not going to look realistic, okay? So then you'll continue to do that to all of these sides here, okay? Um, I'm not going to take the time to show you that because I think you guys can kind of get it and look at the example now. Um, last thing that we'll go through, I'm not going to show you how to do the cone because based off of that cylinder shape, you should know how to do that. It's just going to be a little bit different, okay? So before you end this project, okay, I'm going to zoom out. Before you end this project, what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that all four of your shapes are showing. Now I only have three right now, but you will have four. So you can see that they're all different sizes. And a really cool way that we can actually resize these to make them bigger, so like the sphere is huge. On your keyboard, if you press Command T, that highlights the shape. I'm going to move that. Command T. And you can make and move that as big as you want. Okay, So you can make things look like they go together. Okay, when you're done, when you get at the size you want, press enter, select a new layer, and try again. So here, I don't want that cylinder to be as fat. Okay. So let's say I want it a little bit taller. Maybe like that. Okay. Then I'm just going to command T again for my cube to make it a little bit bigger. Enter to get rid of that. Now, we don't want our objects to look like they are floating. So, you will need to move them. They will need to overlap, okay? But, some objects might be in front of the other, okay? Um, you will need to add in some shadows. Um, good way to use that is just by using your brush tool. You guys can be creative with how you're going to do that. Try out using um, the dodge tool, um, all tools that you guys know how to do. But the last thing that you will need to do is you will need to come in with a background that shows us where the light source is coming from. So right here, my light source is coming up from this top corner. That's why all of these sides are the lightest right now. So my shadows, if I were to draw a shadow on my cylinder here, I'm going to kind of pick just this blackish color. I'm going to turn on the opacity for this so it's a little bit see-through. But what you will do is you will just simply draw your shadow, okay? Now, I did that on my cylinder right there, and it's going over my sphere a little bit. If I want the sphere to be in front, I just have to move it like that, okay? Now, I should have done a better job cleaning it up on this area here. Oops, I did that on the wrong. So if you don't want it to get on your sphere, 
we could, or excuse me, your cylinder, we could highlight this. So watch here. So if you select the sphere, okay. Oh, the cylinder. I'm so sorry. So if you select this part and then select inverse, or you can do it the opposite way too. So you could just go in and click the background. So now it's only going to make edits on the background. So I go to my brush tool and it's not going to get anything on there, but I kind of have a thin shadow. I'm going to go over that a couple times. Okay. Now the reason I turned down the opacity is because you guys are going to have to add in some sort of background. Okay. That's totally up to you what you choose to do for that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be my background layer. Change it to background. I'm going to use the marquee tool to divide it in half. So like this is this, the table that it's sitting on. And I'm going to go up here to my gradient. You don't have to use a gradient. You can if you want to. Um, make sure the opacity is turned up. Okay, so I am going to kind of do, let's see, I'll do this color. Okay, my background is selected there and I'm just going to do it across like this. And notice that shadow shows up nicely on that background then, okay. Now, the same thing then, I'm going to take the marquee tool and then for my background I'm going to do the top half. You can do it the same color or it can be a little bit different. But the tabletop, I mean, I should be able to tell a difference between this background and the top part here. So if I use the same gradient, if I drag it across like this, that all looks the same right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over and I'm going to make it a little bit darker by taking my brush tool, turning down the opacity quite a bit, and then I'm going to kind of pick maybe this color here, this black. Just make it a smidge darker. So now, even just going like that, you can tell that there's a distinct difference, okay? Now, you can turn all of these shapes into something else, like um, there was the Pokeball and the Campbell Soup Can and the other one. Just make sure that you have four shapes, four shadows, and you have a background and objects are not floating in. You still need to add a, uh, a cone, but that's going to be very much like the cylinder.